All right. I think we're good. Sorry for the little technical difficulty there this morning. All right, so welcome everybody. This is um, an Essential Oils 101 class. My name is Deb Hensley, and um, we're doing kind of a dual thing. We've got two different Facebook class go classes going on these couple days. So um, I'm friends with both Melissa and Angeline. Um, grew up with Melissa. We grew up, you know, like, I don't know, probably peeing our pants together. We were um, grew up together in sweet homes since we were little ones. Um, so known her for my whole life, and um, she's kind of new on her essential oils journey, as is Angeline, the other host of the Facebook class, um, doing two different classes. Um, Angeline and I met down when we were both working at paramedics in Grants Pass. Um, so welcome and thank you for joining for this webinar. Um, it's going to be just a real kind of brief overview of essential oils, what they do, how to use them, how to safely use them. And then um, we'll go over kind of the 10 foundational oils. Um, there's lots of room for questions. There's a chat box somewhere in, it depends on your different platform, but there is a chat feature to Zoom. So if you have any questions, just type them in the group chat box and I can see them and I can try to answer them as we go along. Um, and then on the Facebook pages, you know, there was a few questions asked and so we'll answer those as well um, as we go. And, I know Melissa had asked one of the questions was what are good oils for people just starting out? And I'll start right off the bat and just answer that one because we're going to go over all those today. Um, doTERRA has some kind of kits that they have designed that are intro kits that um, really are the best kind of like 10 foundational oils to start your journey off with because it's really like you can treat, not treat, sorry, you can, um, you can handle just about anything that comes up in your family with illness and with kids and scrapes and bumps and different things, you can handle just about everything with the um, home essentials or the family essentials kit. And we're gonna talk about those 10 oils today. Um, we'll go into some other ones as well. But anyway, so the best oils for starting off, really those foundational oils in the kits, you can never go wrong with lemon, lavender, and peppermint as well. Um, Alrighty, so taking control of our health. That's kind of what doTERRA is all about. And I have this little video, it's a little four minute video, but for some reason my PowerPoint's not wanting to work super duper well this morning. So, oh wait, maybe it's gonna work. No, I don't think so. Did we just freeze up? Oh my gosh. I have a circle of doom on my computer. Okay, I don't know if you can still hear me. I'm gonna go get my old laptop because this new one's about to go into the garbage. So, if you can still hear me, hang on just a minute. Let me reboot my old laptop because I don't know what's wrong with this one. No, I can't because it's in my car. Okay, so, everybody still there? I swear to God. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Let 
My PowerPoint is dying, so let me try that again. This new computer is going back to Costco and I'm just buying a Mac. I'm gonna just bite the bullet, I swear. Okay, let's try this one more time. Do, do, do. We're just gonna bypass the video because that seems to be the issue. Okay. Goodness gracious. All right, let me share my screen again. We'll just bypass the video. Um, I'll post the video separately on the groups because it's a really great little um, four minute video on kind of just a real basic overview of what essential oils are. Um, so I will post that online, but for now we're just gonna skip it because I don't know why, but PowerPoint hates me this morning. <laughs> okay. so. Back to oils. Sorry, technical difficulties are lovely. Okay, so the healthcare industry. So doTERRA's main, um, main goal is to better people's lives and to empower people to take their healthcare into their own hands and be educated and to be able to treat ourselves um, and treat the things that come up in our homes in a natural way. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to cure chronic illnesses. I'm not saying that we're going to treat everything in our homes in a natural way. But I'm saying that we can have tools at our hands, um, that we have, you know, at our fingertips on our counters at home. This is my big box that sits on my counter, and this is my little handy toolbox that I go to before we have to um, go to the doctor when things come up. We, I have some tools at my disposal that I can try and manage our symptoms at home. So $4.5 trillion is spent on healthcare every single year. That number, this PowerPoint was actually made, I don't know, a year or two ago. It's probably way higher than that nowadays. Um, the average 65 year old is on 13 different prescriptions, of which 13 are, or sorry, three of which are usually on, you know, on average necessary, and the other 10 tend to counteract the side, side effects of the three that are needed. So my favorite, my husband hates watching TV with me at night because my absolute favorite, I hate it, that's sarcastic, Commercial right now is the one that is for constipation, opioid-induced constipation. So now if you have to take opioids for pain, um, now we have a prescription medication that can unconstipate you. So why don't we talk about fiber? Why don't we talk about trying to get people off these chronic pain medications? Why don't we talk about diet and exercise and water intake and all of the things that affect our poop? <laughs> rather than just adding another prescription medication into the mix. Um, it drives me bananas. Every time the commercial comes on, I go on a trip and my husband's like, oh my God, would you just shut up? So that it's called polypharmacy. It's a phenomenon that makes me crazy as a nurse. And I see it every day when people come into my emergency room and I see their medication list and it makes me mad. It makes me mad at doctors. Um, it, it's really frustrating. So let's see, next bullet point, sorry, I'll get off my soapbox. 106,000, yeah, 106,000 people, 100,000 people die in the United States from correctly prescribed and correctly taken medication. Now, a lot of that is narcotic and narcotic um, accidental abuse or narcotic use. A lot of that I feel like has a lot to do with chemotherapies. Um, chemotherapy is correctly prescribed, but a lot of times we still are dying from well, is it the cancer? Or is it all the side effects of chemotherapy? I know there's been some people in my life that have had family members very close to them pass away um, from incorrectly dosed chemotherapy because so much of what we do with cancer treatment is, well, we think this might work. We'll try it. And then you deal with the side effects later. So um, every major illness is on the rise. Cancer, diabetes, heart disease, autoimmune. Autoimmune is a huge one on the rise. Anxiety, depression, and dependency. Obesity also. So this is what makes me really sad, but preschoolers are the fastest growing age group that are being prescribed antidepressant medications. Now, I think a lot of this has to do with the um, ADD and ADHD and autism um, spectrums and people just are going straight to um, 
prescription medications for those as well. So I think that has some of what has to do with that statistic, but still, that's an alarming statistic. Okay, so doTERRA. doTERRA means gift of the earth, the actual word is what it means. And um, its oils are indigenous and sourced from around the world where they're grown in their native environments. So we have some that are grown here in the United States. Arbor vitae and peppermint are from Washington state, so there are local oils. Um, but for the most part, most of them are grown outside of the United States where it has been found that they grow the most potent um, and, and pure. So we work with local farmers and do fair trade processes. It's called co-impact sourcing. There's a website called source2u.com that goes way, way, way in depth. And you can see all the stuff that doTERRA does for their farmers to make sure that they're paid fairly, that they're paid throughout the year, not just one time at harvest. Um, and then it talks about all of the amazing work that they do providing um, water, you know, running water and schools and housing and sustainable living for these farmers in mostly third world countries. So um, I really encourage everybody to, to check out that website. It's really what, for me, sold me on the company of doTERRA and why, um, why I believe in the heart of this company. Okay, so each batch of oils is outsourced um, to a third party, and it's tested on seven different points to confirm that they're completely pure and nothing is added. It's also tested then once it comes into doTERRA. So it's third party tested and tested three more times once it actually arrives into doTERRA's facilities. They are free of pesticides, chemicals, synthetics, fillers. Um, it is nothing but what it says on the bottle. So a bottle of rosemary is 100% pure rosemary oil. There is no alcohol, no fractionated coconut oil, no additives or fillers in these bottles. That's why there's a bit of an expensive price tag. You get what you pay for with essential oils. Um, you're paying for the 100% pure oil that has no fillers or additives in them with doTERRA. So they're considered certified pure therapeutic grade. It's considered medicinal grade essential oils because it is that 100% pure oil. Oops, I went too far. Okay. Okay, so what are essential oils? I'm not even gonna try to play this video because like I said, PowerPoint hates me this morning, <laughs> but I will post these on the groups. Um, this video is on YouTube. It's also on doTERRA's website. Um, it just talks a little bit about what are essential oils. They come from, you know, how they come, where they come from the plant. Some are from the rind, for example, citrus oils, lemon and, la um, lemon and orange and bergamot, all those come from the rind of the fruit. Some of them come from roots like vetiver. Um, so this video just talks a little bit about that. I'll post it on the group though, because I just, yeah, don't trust my PowerPoint this morning. Okay, so ways to apply. There are essentially three ways that you can apply essential oils and to use them. There's topically, internally, and um, aromatic. So aromatic, anytime you're smelling essential oils, I have my diffuser going right over here, um, that is aromatic application. You can, application, you can put it on a bracelet, a diffusing bracelet, you can put it on a diffusing necklace. Anytime you're smelling essential oils, that is the aromatic um, way of using them. I'm going backwards, sorry. Internally, there's kind of two ways that you can do internal. The picture here shows um, one of them. You could put it in water and drink down. So I do use little shot glasses, and then I'll put a couple drops of oil in with the water, and you can um, drink it down. Or you can use veggie caps. There's a picture of doTERRA's veggie caps here. You can also buy them at any natural food store. You can put a couple drops of oil in the little capsule, put the cap back on, and swallow it down just like you would any vitamin. Um, I do this with digestin. I really don't care for the taste of digestin. I don't like that taste of anise, that black licorice flavor. Um, but I love the effects of digestin if I'm nauseated or if I'm having um, like acid reflux, if I eat too much. So I use the veggie caps a lot with digestin and I'll add an extra drop of ginger to it and it'll knock out any nausea or heartburn um, that, that I have. So I like to, pre I prefer to use the veggie caps for most things. Another way to do internal is to put a drop under your tongue. Um, I do this a lot with different oils. They do it with frankincense, primarily. I put a drop under my tongue. It's really good for mood support, and it also helps me when I have migraines. Um, frankincense, we'll talk about later in the, um, in the PowerPoint here about how great it is, but that's one way. Is it's called sublingual. You're putting it in and it's absorbing through your mucous membranes in your mouth, which are really, really vascular. So the oils are getting into your bloodstream really quickly that way. All right, and the most popular way that most people know about is topically. So anytime you're putting essential oils onto your skin, that's topical application. Um, essential oils work so well and they get into our bloodstream so easily because they're lipid soluble. So they go in through the fatty layer in our subcutaneous tissue through our skin and then in that subcutaneous 
area is capillaries. And so then they soak in and they get into your bloodstream through your capillary beds that way. Um, if you put something on your skin, it takes 20, sorry, my things popping stuff up here, um, 30 seconds for it to absorb into your skin and it's systemic in your whole body within 20 minutes. So for me, that was really an eye opener. I used to be a huge Bath and Body product user. Um, when they'd have their big sales at Christmas, I'd buy them and everybody got Bath and Body Works for Christmas. And then I really started learning more about essential oils and learning more about um, fragrance and when things are labeled as just fragrance, how some of those things can be really not good for our skin. Um, so I have really cut out, I, I don't use anything really chemically on my skin anymore. I just use doTERRA's um, lotion base and my essential oils for the most part. Um, there's a lot that you can look up and learn about how um, uh, on some different websites and we do some other classes with that about topical application. So another thing about topical application is you may have heard to put things on the bottom of your feet. And I always thought, okay, I have a headache. Why am I putting something on my feet? That doesn't make any sense. But your feet have really large pores and a really concentrated areas of area of pores on them. So if you rub something on your feet, it also has reflexology points. So if you have a headache, for example, you can put oils and you can put on that reflexology point, push on that reflexology point to activate it, and you're using some reflexology modalities as well to help with your symptoms. Um, so feet can be a really powerful place. Also, if you don't particularly like the smell of the oil that has been recommended for you for whatever ailment you're trying to deal with your symptoms, you can put socks on. Um, so for example, vetiver is really one that's good for focus, um, but I don't really want my daughter going to school smelling like vetiver oil. So you can put it on their feet, you can put socks on, and it can um, help her focus throughout the day without smelling quite so, it's a little bit of a hippie smell, um, earthy smell. So if you don't like the scent of it, it's a good place to put, um, you can kind of hide it a little bit that way. All right, so essential oils are very, very safe. Um, you can use them on newborns to great grandmas. There's just some safety precautions or safety things that you need to be aware of. And with that, for the most part, it's all dilution. So if you have someone with sensitive skin or you have sensitive skin, um, or you're putting it on your kiddos or the elderly, you really need to make sure we're diluting the essential oils. They're very, very potent and powerful. And if you're putting a drop right on your skin, it can be a little bit abrasive to that area. So if you dilute it in some coconut oil, for example, or any vegetable-based oil, coconut oil is my favorite, then you're diluting it and you're putting that one drop over a larger area that's a little bit more diluted. And so it won't cause a skin sensitivity reaction that way. Um, if you were to ever get, my daughter did this one time, she, I'm not sure if I put it on her chest, but she got some peppermint in her eyes. I'm probably guessing she, I put it on her chest and she touched it and put her hands in her eyes. Um, so our kind of gut initial reaction is we wanna go splash water in our eyes because that's what we do for other things. But if you do that with essential oils, it's actually gonna make it worse because the oil is just carried further and affects more area with water. So you wanna actually do, um, splash milk in their eyes or take some coconut oil and it, like if it's just a skin area, rub it in further um, and to help dilute that oil out. So if you do water, it, it's just water and oil don't mix. It's not really going to help you. You want to have something that's lipid soluble that oils can hold on to. Um, and this will happen with kids sometimes. I put some deep blue on Kaylee's knees the other night, last night for um, growing pains. And then she was complaining because we must have put a little too much on and she thought it was hot burning her it's the peppermint in it. And so I just went and got some coconut oil, rubbed it on a little bit more, and she was fine within a couple of seconds. Um, there are also a few oils that are considered hot oils. Oregano is one. Um, cinnamon is one that you always want to make sure and dilute, even if you don't have sensitive skin. If you're putting it on the bottom of your feet, you're fine. That's pretty calloused skin. If you're putting it on, say, the inside of your wrist or somewhere where you have a little more gentle skin, you definitely want to dilute those oils. And the bottles stay on them to dilute for skin sensitivities. All right, so why are essential oils effective? So a lot of times you go to the doctor, you've had a cold for a few days, and you've got the runny nose and sinus stuff that's really common this time of year. A lot of it's allergies, but there's also some little viral junk going around. So you go to the doctor, and they look in your ears and your eyes and your nose, and they say, yeah, you've just got a virus. Suck it up, buttercup. There's not much we can do for you um, because doctors are wising up and really not prescribing antibiotics as often as they used to be, which is a good thing. Um, however, it doesn't really help us with our symptoms at all because now we just pay the doctor's copay and or the whole visit if you have high deductible insurance um, and you don't really have anything to help you. So essential oils can actually help with viral infections. So you have a virus there in the picture. 
sorry, you have a cell there in the picture, and the virus is on the inside of the cell. That's why viruses, why, why antibacterial medications uh, don't help with viruses, because antibiotics cannot penetrate the cell membrane. Bacteria stick to the outside of the cell membrane, and so antibiotic medications just go in, wipe off the bacteria on the outside of that cell membrane, and kill it. You're done. But viruses are tricky, tricky. They're on the inside, and antibiotics cannot penetrate cell membranes. However, essential oils can. Essential oils are the same membranes. We're all plant-based materials. We're all natural products. So essential oils can actually penetrate into that cell membrane and go in and kill viruses and help and um, keep them from replicating. So if you have a virus, things like OnGuard that have um, cinnamon and clove and some really good antiviral oils in them can actually help your symptoms to shorten and they can also keep you from getting sick. We do OnGuard like crazy at the first sign of illness around our house and it used to be my husband and I would say, okay, it's not a matter of if, but when we get sick because the kids are sick and they're sneezing and coughing in your face. Um, we do on guard oil like crazy now and we rarely get sick. And if we do, our symptoms are super duper short. If our girls get sick, they're generally only missing one, maybe two days of school now. Whereas a lot of times before it was three or four because it just, it lingers on and there isn't really anything to help you. Um, so on guard has been a huge kind of aha thing for us and our family where we were like, holy cow, this stuff, this stuff really works. Um, and at the first sign of illness in your house, if you hit it hard with on guard, I promise you, um, you will have some good results. Okay. So just an idea here of a typical medicine cabinet on one side and the things that you can replace it with on the other side. So essential oils do seem to cost more. They are kind of a big price point. However, when you look at the cost of everything on the left, hand side of your screen there, that adds up too. Um, and if you can replace it with natural products and it takes a lot less products um, on the right hand side of your screen there, it can be really powerful and it can actually end up costing your family less money in the long run. All right, so we're gonna go over the 10 foundational oils um, that come in those two kits that are kind of the, the end all be all, the, the great little kit um, collections that can get most of our symptoms resolved. Okay, so lavender. Lavender is really all things calming. Everybody is probably familiar with the scent of lavender. Um, for me, when I first smelled doTERRA's lavender, I was like, oh, that smells so different. I, don't, I wasn't quite sure that I liked it at first. And it was because I was so used to the synthetic smell of lavender, the lavender that comes in my Bath and Body Works products and all of that, but it's not a true lavender plant oil. It's a synthetic replication of that scent. It's a perfume, it's a fragrance. Um, and so it took, once I kind of realized that, and I love the scent of lavender now, it is absolutely one of my favorite oils, um, but it, it, I was a little curious at first about why I thought it smelled so different, and people will say that to me sometimes. I'm like, well, it's just because you're used to a different kind of lavender that's totally synthetic. So it's all things calming. It is wonderful for our skin. Um, is there more on this slide? Yes. Oh, I got to warn you about that though first, because there's a pictures of some burns. Um, so it's really, really good for burns and keeping our skin healed. Um, it's also a natural antihistamine. So it's great if you get like this time of year, so we've got bees and wasps that are coming out and they're kind of angry. Um, so lavender can really be helpful in, um, it has some natural antihistamine properties and keeping that swelling, that localized swelling down. Lavender, because those antihistamine properties is also really good at helping us with our seasonal allergy symptoms. Um, you can take it internally or you can just put it on your skin, the mix of lemon, lavender, and peppermint. Um, together are a wonderful allergy duo. We'll talk about that. There's a slide at the end too. Um, so I'm going to warn you if you're a little bit squeamish, the next slide is some pictures of a kiddo that burned a foot in a campfire. The burn pictures are a little like, make if you're a little squeamish, um, just look away for a second. But I want to show you the amazing effects of what lavender can do. So these are some pictures of a little kiddo's foot that um, stepped on a part of a campfire while camping. And you can see the burn's pretty significant there. The one up on the top left, um, these pictures are just using lavender essential oil and probably some coconut oil to keep it hydrated as well to help with the healing process and to help keep the inflammation down um, and to help soothe the area and keep the burnout also. So some amazing results just using lavender essential oil in 15 days. So typically that, I mean, I see those kind of burns in the ER and we're doing sylvadine and we're doing lots of different um, things and that, I didn't see the in-between pictures, but could even maybe use some debridement. So just lavender essential oil, that kiddo is barely gonna have some scars. You can still see on the top of the toes, there's a little and maybe lost some toenails, I don't know. Um, 
but that's amazing with two weeks of use of essential oils. Um, and lavender or peppermint can also help to take the burn out, but that's pretty impressive. So lavender is all things calming and soothing, especially for the skin, okay? So peppermint is our second oil we're going over. And um, peppermint, like I said, it's our local from Washington State. It's amazing, it's my summertime oil. I go through a lot of it in the summertime, I couldn't live without it. I don't do super well in the heat. So my favorite thing to use peppermint for is one, headaches, and two, to help cool me. I love to garden in the summer. So I have a little spray bottle, I should have brought it over. I have a little spray bottle, it's a little glass bottle. And all it is is peppermint and water. Sometimes I'll put lavender in it too. And I shake it up and I spray it on my chest and I spray it on the small of my back. Um, and sometimes I'll spray it on my face and just make sure I have my eyes closed. Um, and it will instantly cool you off. It can actually drop your body temperature. Um, it's great then also for uh, hot flashes and using it for that. You can put it kind of wherever your hot flash is so people that get them in different areas. You can use it as a spray or you can just use straight peppermint oil, put a little, you know, tip your bottle upside down, put some on your finger and rub it wherever um, you're having your hot flash. Uh, it's amazing for that. Okay, so it's also really good for the GI tract. Peppermint is one of the main things in digestion oil. Um, it's really, really soothing to the stomach and can be really helpful for headaches. I take it in peppermint and lavender and I put it in the back of my head and my neck and where my tension is. And it's really good at helping with tension headaches um, to ease those symptoms. Oh, memory is another thing. So it's really um, invigorating and can really help you focus. So if you have a big class um, happening or you're studying or you have a test coming up or the afternoon kind of three o'clock, I need a coffee. Uh, you can put a little peppermint in your hands, rub your hands together, breathe it in, and it will definitely wake you up and open up your sinuses too, so you get double, double effects that way. All right, lemon essential oil. Um, one of my absolute favorites and the most cost-effective, a wholesale price on a bottle of lemons, $10 for the full-size 250 ml um, bottle. Very cost-effective. 45, 45 lemons are required for every full-size bottle of lemon. Um, it comes from the rind, so that kind of tells you how powerful these little oils are. Lemon is a really, really good detoxifier. I put either lemon or lately my kick has been lime in my water. Every time I fill my water bottle, I have a stainless steel um, hydro flask. Um, so stainless steel or glass is the preference there. But lemon in your water can be really, really detoxifying. It can also help if you just get tired of plain old water um, and you don't want to add some chemicals and artificial sweeteners of crystal light. Um, so lemon gives your water a nice refreshing taste. You can shake up your water bottle and drink it. It tastes wonderful. Um, it's also good for digestive issues and sore throat. One of my favorite things to do with sore throat is to um, put it in a little shot glass with some On Guard and lemon and gargle it down. Your, um, your sore throat will feel so much better in the morning. I make it as strong as I can bear with On Guard. Swap, or gargle a couple different times before bed and you wake up in the morning and be like, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. It's amazing. Um, so it's also really good cold and flu because of that detoxifying, it helps us to kind of push all that gunk through our system. Um, and it's part of our flu bomb, which we'll talk about later. And our allergy bomb. So lemon is definitely one of those must haves in your house, especially for new people. It'll take stickers off of anything 100% better than Goo Gone and you don't have the chemicals on your hands then. So anyone that has little kids knows you get stickers in super convenient places. I was picking up Emily from school and someone had stuck stickers all down a person's car next to me. I was like, oh my gosh, it would be so mad. But lemon essential oil, take them right off and it won't take the paint off. Okay, so allergies. Here's the allergy bomb we talked about. Two drops each of lemon, lavender, and peppermint in a little shot glass of water. You can also do this in a little capsule if you don't want the taste of those oils. Um, or doTERRA loves us so much, they made it super duper easy and they made tri -ease, which are those three oils in a little soft gel, and they're pre-made for us. I have one that I just take with my vitamins every day, and aside from a couple days this year, um, my allergies, I haven't taken any over-the-counter medication so far. Um, so another thing you can do is just swish it around your mouth and swallow it down, or you can put it in a roller ball and just roll it onto your skin that way. Um, if the allergies are really extreme, you can add Melaleuca essential oil, I mean, you can also add some drops of digestin and then breathe in eucalyptus if you're having a lot of respiratory issues. Breathing eucalyptus can help to open up those airways. So the allergy bomb is lemon, lavender, and peppermint, um, two drops of each. All right, so first aid for the skin. Melaleuca is definitely our um, skin oil here. Hold on, what about free babies? The little one's nose will not stop running when he's outside right now. 
Okay, so it might be teething. Teething can definitely cause runny noses, but lemon, lavender, and peppermint is totally safe for kiddos. What I would do is put it in a little rollerball and dilute it. So if you have like a five or a 10 mil rollerball, I would use one drop of each. If it's a 10 mil, you can do two drops of each and then fill the rest up with coconut oil. And then you can just rub that on their skin and that can help them to treat, uh, to, to ease allergy symptoms. Um, but yeah, you just want to make sure it's diluted, especially because peppermint, um, they'll think it's burning them. It's not, it's really cooling their skin, but kiddos always say it's burning. Um, and if that happens, just add a little bit more coconut oil to it and it'll go right away. Good question. Thanks, Jen. Okay. So first aid for the skin, Melaleuca. Um, I have what's called like an owie spray in our house and it is lavender and Melaleuca and some coconut oil. Um, Super easy. My kiddos know if they fall down and get a scrape, the owie spray is coming out, and that's what they ask for. They'll go into the bathroom and grab it. Um, that goes on before all our band aids. No more Neosporin in our house. Um, so Melaleuca is really good antifungal and antiviral. Um, it is 100% better than any over the counter medication for athletes' foot. One of the nurse practitioners I work with, actually, he'll tell people, like, don't even bother. Just go find yourself the best bottle of Melaleuca. Tea tree is the other common name for it. Um, so the best bottle of tea tree or melaleuca you can find and put it right on your um, skin for athlete's foot. And it also helps with those, okay, this is kind of gross, the nurse in me, sorry. The big toenails, if you get like those fungusy, big, thick toenails, um, melaleuca will kill the fungus in that. Um, it's great for fleas. It's a good um, thing to use in our um, bug repellents. And it's great for our hair too. So I cringe at the thought of head lice. The day my kids come home with head lice, I swear to God, I'm just going to shave their head. I, I don't do head lice. It makes my skin absolutely crawl. Um, so I put Melaleuca in my daughter's um, spray bottle because she has my curly hair. So in the morning, we spray her hair down and then brush it. Um, and so she gets Melaleuca in her hair every single day to ward off lice. And then we had an outbreak at our school, and I was also spraying down her jacket before and after um, school as well. So really good if you've got kiddos in school, if you have a head lice outbreak, have Melaleuca on hand. My kindergarten teacher said her husband actually caught her taking the whole bottle and just dumping it on her head one day. He's like, oh, you smell earthy. Um, so it helps with head lice, I promise. All right, let's see. It's also good for insect bites, body odor, athlete's foot, acne, we talked about. I, if I'm getting a zit, I just have a little bottle of Melaleuca and I just put it right on there in my bathroom. All righty. So frankincense, the king of essential oils. Um, I did a Facebook Live, which was great, but then Emily Wright, who's one of the founders of doTERRA, totally stole my thunder. She did an amazing Facebook Live on frankincense oil, like the day after I did. Um, so I was like, hey, if you don't believe me, go look at her video. It's amazing. She talks about how great frankincense oil is, and that link is posted on my Facebook page, um, Everything Essential Grants Pass. It's also on doTERRA's um, I think it was the doTERRA International Facebook page. So check out her live. She talks a lot about frankincense oil and what it's good for, but we'll go over it here. So frankincense is actually from the resin of the tree. So they take the frankincense trees and they cut little notches in them. Um, and the resin that comes out is harvested. And then that is what is, um, I think it's steam distilled. It might be pressed. I'm pretty sure it's steam distilled um, down to make the frankincense essential oil. Our frankincense comes from Somalia and Oman. Has to be super, super dry and super, super hot for those frankincense trees to really produce the high quality frankincense that doTERRA um, has. We also do a ton, ton, ton of the co-impact sourcing work with the farmers in Somalia. Somalia, um, when the doTERRA team was actually traveling there, everybody was advising them, like, you guys are crazy, like, you're not gonna have US Embassy support, like, this is like a war ridden area. And they were like, no, we're going. And they've actually created a co-op of farmers in Somalia. This one's like never been done. The farmers are actually working together to farm and raise and harvest the frankincense. Um, so some, some really interesting stuff with that. And it's on the, the um, co-impact sourcing, sorry, the source to you.com website. Um, and I would encourage everybody to just look more into that because it's, it's a really, really cool initiative that's happening in Somalia right now. Okay, frankincense oil. When in doubt, use frankincense. I always tell people if it was good enough for baby Jesus, it was good enough, it can be good enough for us. Um, it's one of the few oils that can actually cross the blood brain barrier. Oops, what just happened to my PowerPoint? Sorry. There we go. Um, so it can be really good in easing symptoms of neurological conditions. So I know there's some testimonials out there with it um, being able to stop or slow the symptoms when someone's having a seizure. There is also some really amazing 
research that's happening with essential oils, specifically frankincense, and its ability to kill cancer cells that keep our health, our normal skin cells healthy, our, not our skin cells, our body cells healthy. Um, so pubmed.gov up at the top of your screen there. If you go to pubmed.gov, which is a government research site, and type in frankincense oil or frankincense and cancer, you can pull up the studies and read them for yourself. And you can see this isn't just me. It's specifically with bladder cancer that they're doing um, or had done a bunch of research on. Some amazing, amazing stuff. And it gives me some hope for cancer treatment in the future and hopefully some more natural alternatives to cancer treatment. Um, it's amazing. So there's also quite a bit of research in how essential oils can actually reach the pituitary gland. Um, so essential oils, frankincense specifically, can cross the blood-brain barrier. It's one of the few things in the world. Our blood-brain barrier is there to protect us. So you have your brain, you have your cere cerebral spinal fluid, and then there's a barrier that goes all your, over your brain and down your spinal column. And it's to keep us so that all the caffeine and lovely things that we put into our body don't go straight to our brain. That's good. That's a, it's a barrier that's there to protect us. But it's also cool because there's a few things that can help our bodies that can cross that barrier, like frankincense. Um, I use it under my tongue when I have migraines. That's one of those things where it's a neurological symptom and it helps. Um, so I encourage you to do a little bit more research into frankincense. Its main thing is that it keeps our healthy health self, healthy health cells healthy and helps our dead cells or our um, damaged cells to, um, to go away, to die. So it's really good for skin issues as well. I use it as a toner on my face. Um, it's just, it's a wonderful oil at really helping our body to heal itself and to um, regenerate our healthy cells. Okay, enough about that. Sorry, I feel like I'm just repeating myself. Okay, so it's called Liquid Gold. Um, powerful immune enhancer, and a cancer or tumor, and a wrinkle, anti-inflammatory. There's a list of things that aren't so compliant there that it can help to ease the symptoms of. Okay, on to the next one, oregano. Not my favorite essential oil, uh, the smell of it. And this is one oil that I tell people, this is why I really encourage new beginners to start out with one of the kits. I would have never purchased oregano essential oil on my own when I was starting out because it's so strong. I mean, it smells like oregano. It smells like Italian spices in your cupboard, but like times a hundred. Um, I would have never probably bought it, but I absolutely love this oil and it's one of my staples hundred percent because it's part of the flu bomb and it's really, really good, a powerful natural antibiotic. Um, it can also be really good at taking, it shows a little picture of the wart there, and taking skin tags or skin imperfections um, off. It is a hot oil. You want to make sure you're diluting it if you're using it anywhere other than like your feet, because um, it definitely will get warm on your skin. It's considered five times stronger than penicillin, and oh, I forget which one it is. I always forget if it was Louis Pasteur or one of those guys that you learned about in biology class way back in high school. Um, but they've been using oregano essential oil since way back in the day, um, you know, early 1800s to treat antibiotic type infections back then. Um, there's also some stuff that's been happening with using oregano essential oil in um, organic chicken farming. My always joke is, hey, so does it come Italian flavored? <laughs> okay, dad joke, hashtag. Um, so it also is good at removing skin things and can also be used for um, fungus and athlete's foot. I think melaleuca works a little bit better, um, but if melaleuca doesn't work, try oregano. I've had two different people who have um, used melaleuca or oregano for ringworm. One of them, and, and both of them, it works different. One used, one preferred melaleuca and one of them preferred oregano. Um, so those two oils can be a little bit interchangeable. If one doesn't work, try the other. Um, let's see what else. Oh, painkiller, it's in, um, or the morphine balm, also not super compliant there, but pain relief, you can take it in a little gel cap um, with frankincense, and it's an amazing uh, natural pain reliever. All right, so now we're going to go on to the blends. We've covered the um, foundational plain oils, and then doTERRA has some amazing blends. And you could try to replicate these if you want. You can probably do it um, I've had a lot of people ask and play around with that. I am just a believer in their blends. They're really pretty cost effective and I take the easy way out. They've already been proven and tried to me and I love them. Um, but if you want to try making your own, go for it. Let me know what you find out. Um, Breathe is an amazing respiratory support blend. It has eucalyptus and rosemary and peppermint and cardamom and robinsara and lemon and melaleuca and laurel. So it's a really refreshing um, blend just that it'll open up your sinuses. So here's my favorite thing to do with breathe. 
you can take it and put a drop in your hands. I don't know if you can still see me on the screen or not, but I'm gonna do it, so if you can, follow. You put a drop in your hands here, and you cover up your hands, so cover up where the drop was with your other hand, make a little O there, and just kind of let those vapors build up in there a little bit, and then, so say you wanna use it like an inhaler. You can use it just like your inhaler. You breathe all your air out, and then, and then you hold your breath for a minute. And oh my goodness, the amount of bronchodilation that that allows. You can take deep breaths again. It's really, really good at opening up our airways. You can also take it like this and just breathe it in and open up your sinuses. So for that viral little sinus infection that you go to the doctor for and they say, eh, sorry, breathe will be your friend. Breathe it in, open up those sinuses. Lemon is a great expectorant. So then you can do it again with lemon to help get that gunk flowing. I recommended this to a gal I worked with yesterday. No, day before yesterday and then I saw her yesterday. She's like, oh my gosh, it works so good, but now the problem is everything's draining down the back of my throat, so I have a sore throat. I'm like, but that's good. Things are moving. Things are draining. And we can support your sore throat with lemon and on guard. Um, so it works really, really good at getting those sinuses open and helping things move um, and also helping open up your lungs. All right, digest and, oh, and breathe this amazing in diffusers at night if you get that little tickly cough. Um, I love to diffuse it at night. Digestin essential oil. I always miss one of the things. So I'm just going to read off what's in the blends. It seems like I always miss one if I don't just read it. Um, ginger, peppermint, caraway, coriander, anise, tarragon, and fennel. So, so many good things for um, anything digestion related. Nausea, acid reflux, GERD, that kind of stuff. Um, it can also be really helpful with constipation or diarrhea. It's all about just getting our GI tract back into homeostasis, back and happy. Um, so when my little ones are, if they have constipation, they know to go get the rollerball of digestin and rub it on their belly. Um, or if they just have a tummy ache, they go in and get their little rollerball and they just rub it on their tummy. Um, there's a lovely little norobug going around right now. So um, I know I've been recommending that to a lot of people lately for nausea and vomiting. Um, digestin is really the essential oil for me that was what sold me on essential oils. So I'll take just a second while we're here to tell you about my story and how, why I'm so passionate and do what I do. When my second daughter was born, um, Emily is my older daughter. She was two and a half when we had Kaylee, my second daughter. And she was really good and a really happy, easy baby for about two weeks. And then at about the three week mark, she started crying and she would arch her little back and she'd have these horrible, like little bloated belly. And then she'd have big, nasty farts. And then she'd cry and cry and cry. And we, um, after a few weeks of like, something's not right. Um, we were definitely diagnosed with colic as much as that's diagnosed. It's so much unknown with that. So she proceeded to scream her little head off for the first six months of her life. At three months, I was in my pediatrician's office in tears saying, you told me this would stop. You told me that this would go away by three months. It hasn't. It's still as bad. It's worse. Her and I and our yoga ball, I saw, I, I really didn't leave my bedroom much for the first six months of her life because all she wanted to do was be bounced on a yoga ball. And um, I'd put her on a carrier and I'd sit there and we would bounce on a yoga ball. And it was exhausting and it was, it was a dark, horrible time in my life. Um, my mother happens to live next door, thank God, or I don't know that we would have all survived this because she was able to help and come give me some relief sometimes. Um, so about five months into this process, my friend comes over from Bend and she's like, I know you've tried everything, but have you heard of essential oils? And I'm like, you mean like olive oil? I don't know what you're talking about. And she says, she laughs. And I was like, Oh, so she gives me lavender and digestin in little roller balls. And she's like, just try these. There's absolutely nothing you can lose. And I'm like, that's true. Cause we had done everything short of acupuncture. We were taking, we were driving to Ashland for an hour once or two, about once a week, um, with a screaming baby in the car on the freeway. That's real safe. Um, to do chiropractic adjustments. It was awful. Anyway, so digestion and lavender. Every time I had actually learned an infant colic massage routine. So every time I change her diaper, we would do the colicky massage and then I would take digestion and put it on her tummy in the clockwise motion, put her diaper back on. A lot of times she would have some crazy gas after that. And then um, I would put lavender on me and lavender on her feet. And then we'd go back to our yoga ball and bouncing. Um, and I noticed a big difference. I noticed it was the first time in her six months of life that I felt like as a mom, I could do anything to help her. Um, it was the first time that I felt at all empowered in my ability to care for my own child. I'm not gonna sit here and say that these essential oils cured our colic. I'm not gonna say that and go that far, but I will tell you it got significantly better after using the oils. Maybe she just finally grew out of it. Um, 
I don't know, but it was the first time for me as a mom that I felt like I had any way of helping her during that time and helping me. God, I was going crazy. Um, so digestin, I think really is a powerful, powerful oil. Um, and like I said, if you know somebody that has a colicky kid, tell them about digestin. There is nothing they can lose. Give them a little diluted sample of it. Um, and hopefully it'll help one mom feel some empowerment like it did for me. Um, so that's, that's my story and why I'm so passionate about oils and why I'm so passionate about sharing oils. Cause my whole thing is if I can help one mom have that moment of empowerment with their little kids, I've done my job. I have helped to make the, make moms make this world a better place. So that's really why I do what I do. Okay. So sorry, back on to the oils themselves. But I wanted to share that with you guys. All right. So deep blue, one of the questions that was asked in the group was what are, it was a good oil for helping with pain. Deep Blue, hands down, is the most amazing thing. There's also a bunch of other oils that are really helpful with pain, um, but Deep Blue is a nice blend of things that is a good place to start. Uh, my my uh, partner in crime with oils, Natalie, does an amazing oil, uh, pain class and talks about a ton of different types of pain, from arthritis to um, ligaments and tendons to muscle things. So Anyways, if you're interested, follow our Facebook pages, Everything Essential Grants Pass, and then her page is Essential Oils Medford. All of our classes are shared on both of those platforms. Um, and she does that pain class um, now and again, and I think may even have the recording from her last one still up on her page. I'm not 100% sure about that. Okay, so Deep Blue has, let me read off what's in it really quick. So wintergreen is the main component of Deep Blue. Its chemical components are very similar to aspirin. Um, if you look at their little chemical H's and O's and um, carbons and oxygens and hydrogens, aspirin and wintergreen are very, very similar. That's why it works so well for pain. So camphor, which you get that um, like icy hot feeling from the camphor and the peppermint. Ylang ylang, helichrysum, blue tansy, German chamomile, and osmanthus. So the oil is actually blue, which is why it's called deep blue, um, because of the blue tansy in it. It has the heating and cooling effects of the camphor and the peppermint, much like icy hot but it's actually going in to heal the areas of injury to help your body to take down that inflammation and find out what, where the injury is and help your body heal itself. Heliochrism is an amazing oil like frankincense for healing our injuries. Um, so I say, I tell people it's like icy hot on steroids. It's icy hot that actually helps you to heal, not just mask the pain. Um, so it comes in an oil and it also comes in a rub. I prefer the rub because I have low back issues. It's hard for me to get one drop of oil exactly where I need it to be back there and then rub it around. Um, so I prefer the rub. There's a whole bottle of oil in the rub, in the lotion. It's just in a lotion base that can spread into bigger areas. Um, so if you have like carpal tunnel or something, the oil is perfect. If you have a bigger area like back or um, like your leg or something, the rub might be better for you. All right, it also comes in a roller ball um, that's pictured there. That's great. Like I use my roller ball when I had um, like for tension headaches, I like to use that on my neck and I keep that in my purse because you can put it on while you're driving really easy. Okay. So deep blue for pain. Yay. On guard is our immune support oil. On guard is our one I talked about a little bit earlier about um, using when the sickness hits our house. So on guard essential oil has wild orange clove, cinnamon leaf and cinnamon bark, eucalyptus and rosemary in it. An amazing, amazing antiviral, antibacterial oil. Um, it smells good. I love to diffuse it, especially in the fall because all the cinnamon and clove in it. Um, it can be taken internal and topical and aromatic. Di uh, doTERRA has an amazing product called On Guard Soft Gels. So they're pre-made soft gels with On Guard, Melissa, and black pepper in them. Um, I absolutely swear by On Guard and keeping our family healthy. And the On Guard Soft Gels are amazing. I take one every two to three hours if we have illness in our house. Um, and then normally I'll just take one with my vitamins every day. Um, but if there's a little bug that's going, you got to do it pretty often. That's the thing with essential oils. If you use on guard once and then you get sick, people will say to me, well, your oil didn't work. And I'm like, well, but did you use it often? Cause oils metabolize through our body really quickly. You need to be applying them every two to three hours. There's nothing synthetic for our livers to break down in these oils. So they pass through our system, our kidneys and our liver really quickly um, because there isn't any synthetics in them. 
So if you're really looking for an effect and a powerful effect with essential oils, you gotta use them often. Every two to three hours reapplication, especially, um, so like for pain issues, and also if you're trying to not get sick when sickness is around, every couple hours is really gonna be your key to, um, to having the effects you want from essential oils. Okay, um, there's some amazing stuff if you, again, go to pubmed.gov and put in essential oils, um, specifically clove or cinnamon, and um, you can type in bacteria or you can type in MRSA. Um, and there's some amazing studies that have been done of growing out bacteria and then using antibiotics and then using on guard or um, Thieves is Young Living's version. So there's been some studies done with Thieves as well. Um, very, very similar. They don't use wild orange. They use lemon, it smells a little bit differently. Um, I think ours smells a little bit better, um, but very similar bases of the oil. So if you see one that's done with Thieves, basically the same thing. Um, anyways, check them out. Amazing, amazing research. Alrighty. Oh, one more slide on OnGuard. So there's a whole line of OnGuard products. There are throat drops, which are amazing if you have a sore throat. I like to use them for cough also. Um, the Breathe products have um, some cough drops as well. So totally safe if swallowed. OnGuard makes a toothpaste. If you like the taste of OnGuard, it's amazing and it's fluoride free. Um, the cleaner concentrate is the bottom left hand picture on the slide there. That bottle of cleaner concentrate, I clean everything in my house except the windows with that stuff, and it'll last me about six months to nine months. Um, you're only putting two to three tablespoons in a big, like, 24-ounce spray bottle of water, and we spray everything with that. My little ones help me clean up after dinner. Like, they, they spray the on-guard spray on the kitchen table, and then I come behind and wipe it up, and I don't have to worry about them having some chemicals that are on their hands or getting in their eyes. Um, it's an amazing natural cleaner, and it's antibacterial. I don't use bleach after I do chicken anymore. I spray my sink with on guard cleaner, let it set for a while, and then rinse it with really hot water. I've been doing that for three years. No one's gotten sick in my house. Um, it's, it's an amazing uh, cleaner. In the middle there, they have hand soap. Um, we've replaced all of the antibacterial hand soap in our house, which is really not good because it's creating superbugs with the hand soap. And then they have beadlets, which is a little, it's a quarter of a drop of oil and a little beadlet. So tricky, tricky. This is a mom, mom hack right here. So my, um, how old was she when I started doing this? Probably about three. My youngest daughter, um, my oldest daughter just started taking vitamins, so I would do this with hers too, but my little one can't swallow pills yet. And there was some illness coming around, and for whatever reason, she was being cranky and wasn't letting me putting oils on her, and I'm like, oh, no, we're not doing this. So what I did was I took one of the little on guard beadlets, and I put it in her straw, and then I put my finger over it. And I was like, here, Kaylee, mommy wants you to drink some water, and she drinks the water, and I'm like, wait for it, is she gonna catch on to this? Nope, didn't even know. So that's my trick to get on guard into my kiddos. And I just do it with a little beadlet, so it's a tiny little dose, and I put it in their straw, and I'm like, here, drink some water. Down the hatch, they don't even know. I felt like a genius the first time I did it. <laughs> okay, so, oh, I need to update my references on this slide, sorry. Everything Essential.me is not around anymore, but AromaTools, AromaticScience.com. So Tara.com has amazing, amazing resources under the Products tab and the Advocates tab for a ton more information. Um, Source2u.com to talk about their co-impact sourcing stuff. Um, and I will post some links for references in these Facebook events as well for you guys, okay? I'm sorry, I haven't, or I just realized I haven't updated this one in a while. All right, so doTERRA made simple. Wholesale is really the way to go. So doTERRA can be a little bit of a price sticker shock when you first see some of the stuff. Um, however, you can get everything at a 25% discount by doing a wholesale membership. If you do any of the kits, it, that membership fee is included. It's, um, it's not an additional cost. Um, so the, the Family Essentials Kit is $150. It's the starter kit of all of the oils that we talked about today, plus the beadlets. It comes with the On Guard and Peppermint beadlets. Um, it's a quarter of peppermint with the little beadlet. I use it like Altoids in my purse um, for a breath or if you have an upset tummy. Okay, so the Family Essentials Kit is all the oils we talked about today with the beadlets. It's $150. And then flat rate shipping is $3.99. With any of the kits, well, any, any membership um, enrollments, well, I'll go over the details of this a little bit, but you can get $50 back this month if you enroll this month. So if you enroll with the Family Essentials Kit, it's $150, and you get $50 towards a future purchase um, that's just back sitting in your account waiting for you to use. Um, so a wholesale membership is 25% off across the board. Your membership is good for a whole entire year. Think of it kind of like Costco, but it costs a lot less money. Um, and you can also earn points back in oils if you find that you're ordering a lot. 
you're never obligated to continue buying. This is not like Tupperware or anything like this. This is just simply a, a wholesale customer account. You can use it as much or as little as you would like during that year. At a year's time, it also does not auto renew. I just got dinged from my Amazon Prime because I always forget that it renews in April and I never pay attention to the emails apparently. Um, so it doesn't auto renew. You're not gonna hit, get your credit card hit in a year. What it does is the next time you order after a year, it's a $25 renewal, but they send you a bottle of peppermint as a way to say thank you, which is worth $21. Um, so it's really like a $4 renewal in my mind. Okay, again, sorry, I didn't update this. The New Year New You promo is old. I thought I had taken that off of there. I think when I my computer froze, sorry. Okay, um, so here's the enrollment kits. There's the family, it's now the family essentials kit and the home essentials kit. Same exact oils in those kits. The difference is the size of the bottles. Uh, so the family physician's kit or family essentials kit is the five mil bottles. This is Roman Chamomile as an example here, but it's the five mil bottles. About 85 drops in each one of those bottles. The full size bottles, here's a bottle of Breathe, it's 15 mils and about 250 drops. So you're getting three times the amount of oil and it's not three times the price. So it's a pretty good price savings for the Home Essentials kit. And you also get a diffuser. That pedal diffuser is awesome. Doterra's most popular diffuser. So the Home Essentials kit is a wonderful um, kit. I, I call the Family Physician kit kind of like a sampler kit because you're getting the smaller bottles and you'll run out of some of them that you use quite a bit um, pretty quick. And then the Home Essentials kit, you've got a little bit more of a stash for a longer period of time. The Natural Solutions Kit, if you really want to dive in and really detoxify and um, de de detox your house and your lifestyle, the Natural Solutions Kit is an amazing way to go. You get um, actually 150 points back with that one. You get 100 points back um, with the kit, and then you get the 50 points back for the promo this month as well. And then there's also a Cleanse and Restore Kit. We didn't really go into the cleanse stuff, but if you're someone who has a lot of digestive issues, um, I'll do a Facebook Live later in the week and talk a little bit more about the cleanse. Um, and that's a great kit to start with as well. So all of these kits would qualify you for $50 back on a future order um, if it's by the end of this month. All right. Um, so just some ideas here of essential oils versus over-the-counter drugs, things that you can um, replace. Remember that medicine cabinet picture? So it's just a little bit more broken down with the exact oils that we talked about. And like I said, this recording will be online, so you don't have to like remember all of that. All right, so what do you do if you do get sick? Flu shot in a bottle, we talked a little bit about that. So it's On Guard, Lemon, Oregano, and Melaleuca. <laughs> um, so On Guard, antiviral, antibacterial. Oregano, super powerful antibacterial. Melaleuca, good antifungal, and lemon is really good at cleansing everything out and detoxifying. Um, so you put those four in a roller ball or in a capsule and you swallow it down. Or you just do the On Guard, they have On Guard soft gels. Um, that's the ones I do with my vitamins, or if you're sick every couple of hours. All right, or for kids who can't follow, follow capsules, you can put it on topically, or you can do my little mom trick with the beadlets. Is that it? I think that's it with this slide. It is. All right, so let's stop my screen share here. So thank you guys so much for joining and for um, starting off our couple days of classes here. This will be recorded, or it is recorded, sorry. So I will have it on our Facebook event um, if you want to reference it. And then throughout the next four days, we'll be popping on and posting some stuff. The posts will be numbered so you can kind of keep track. And also, I'll pop on every day or so and do a little Facebook Live on a particular product. So here's my request to you guys is let me know what you want to hear about. Um, like Jen was asking about kiddos. Perfect. If you want to know more about kiddos, let me know because I'll focus our energies on that a little bit more. Um, so let me know what you guys want to hear about. If it's basic oils or if it's kids or if it's like women's health or, um, you want to replace like the Bath and Body Works products. I got all sorts of different ideas and things that I use, um, for different creams and salves and perfumes, things like that. So let me know what you guys want to hear about this week. Um, and we can kind of help to focus our information that way. So it's beneficial. All right. Thank you guys so much for, um, your participation and have a wonderful day, and I will post this as soon as the file converts into our groups. And if there's any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask right now. Or I'll go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and end the recording though.